Hey, hey, party people. In this video, I'm going to go over different ways that you can create volume and structure in your fashion designs. And this video is dedicated to every single one of my design students who have ever brought me a sketch of ruffles sticking straight up in the air. And when I asked them what fabric that would be, they would tell me chiffon. Okay. I love y'all. I love my students. But listen, if you want to be any kind of designer, you absolutely need to understand fabrics, your materials, your linings, your interfacings. And uh, we're going to go over some of that today. We're going to go over materials that create structure and volume. We're also going to talk about some trims, some different methods in patterns. All right. So let's do this. Okay, first of all, I want to talk about hoop skirts. And you might be thinking, oh, Zoe, that's like a costume history thing. And we're not really wearing hoop skirts anymore. And listen, I don't see why not. I want a 16 foot wide hoop skirt so that I can social distance carefully when I'm out in public. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but. Yeah, no, uh, hoop skirts, the idea of hoop skirts and the tradition of hoop skirts can be modernized to create awesome, new, avant-garde or conventional looks, big skirts, you know, weird cages, you name it, as, you know, wearable and commercial or as avant-garde as you want to be. There's all kinds of wire cages and crinolines and bustles. Bustles are just like kind of um, where the volume is concentrated over the butt and uh, all kinds of fun stuff. So that is one way. Unfortunately, I was not able to source any hooping material in time for this video, but you know, I think you can really explore different shapes and different materials to create hoop skirts. Next up, and these are not in any particular order, just whatever I wanted to talk about, are tutus and crinolines or petticoats or underskirts, you know, Whatever you're going to use them for, it's basic. I just basically am talking about scrunched up tool or crinoline or net. These kinds of fabrics are called all these things. And we have very soft tool, we have soft net, we have very stiff net, all these things. And honestly, the, the big thing about stiff net is to make sure the cut edges of the net are not scratching delicate fabrics. But other than that, you know, tool doesn't fray, so you don't have to hem it or anything. And you can gather them, scrunch it up a lot to create lots of volume. This beige one that I'm using, that's a very soft tool. So you have to kind of scrunch it up a lot to get any kind of volume. If you look at this little piece that's a few inches long, the original piece was 30 inches long. Okay, The tool is 60 inches wide and I cut a strip of it and I doubled it over and then I gathered it and that's <laughs> 30 inches, 60 inches of tool created this teeny tiny little piece. So the next time you see this massive ball gown with like miles and miles of gathered tool, it could almost be literal miles or kilometers wherever you live. <laughs> so and then you have the cream color one that I'm using. That's a soft net. There are nets that are much, much stiffer than that. But even the difference in stiffness between the net and the tool, you can see how much more it holds up against this very heavy, drapey jersey that I cut into a circle, circle skirt, circle skirt, circle, circle skirt, excuse me, and laid on top. These days, you know, it's been a trend the past couple of years to use a ton of tool as the self fabric in a lot of fashion looks. And so they're not really even, you know, used as underskirts or petticoats like they used to be. But yeah, it's super fun. But you know, just know that again, if you want to make one of these big gathered tool dresses, you are literally going to have to buy like hundreds of yards. Like, I don't, I don't even know, like, that's a lot of math. 
So you know in those videos where I keep telling high school students, please pay attention in your math class and you're gonna need them later as a fashion designer to do be really good with your solid arithmetic skills. You know, not calculus or anything, but like arithmetic, algebra, geometry, like you need solid skills in those maths. I wasn't kidding. Think about how much math you're gonna have to do to calculate how much tool you're gonna need to create something very like Gian Battista Valli-esque, you know? Next, I wanna talk about stiff materials. I mean, this is really important. Understanding the stiffness and the softness of your materials is really gonna help you figure out whether you can tailor something to have more structure or pretty much anything. It really dictates on how you're gonna use your fabric. And you can have light, stiff materials, you can have heavy, stiff materials, and you can have light, floppy, soft materials like chiffon, and you can have heavy, drapey materials like that jersey, that gray jersey I was using before, silk jerseys, matte jerseys, they, they're all heavy and hang. So the weight of a fabric and the stiffness of the fabric are not the same, okay? And when you're shopping within a category, you can find different versions like these linens I'm holding up. The gray one, the beigey one, that one is the most stiff, but it's only the second heaviest. This big piece of white is a very lightweight silk gazar. You can find heavier gazars, and the black is an organza, and they're both stiffer options to chiffon. The chiffon I'm holding up is a poly chiffon and poly chiffon is stiffer than silk chiffon even, but even then you can see how soft and drapey it is compared to how the organza kind of stands out because it is a stiffer material. So, you know, when you're at the fabric store, do what I do, like pull out some yardage and give it a pinch and see how it drapes, see how it falls. Or if you have a swatch, you know, hold it up in the air, you know, hold it with your fingers at the bottom and see if the fabric swatch will stick straight up. If it stays up, it's pretty stiff. Here, I'm doing a similar comparison where I've got silk charmeuse and very stiff satin. Satin has a lot of body and it's very stiff and holds a lot of shape, whereas Charmeuse is very drapey. It falls beautifully. But again, what do you need it for? Do you need that stiff body feel? The next thing I want to talk to you about is interfacing. So, you know, if your fabric isn't particularly stiff, but you love the surface of the fabric, maybe you can use interfacing to help you. Right now I'm using, I'm demoing with a light gray silk habitat, which is often used in linings because it is a very thin material. And on the one side, I did just a, just a regular gather, just like a ruffle that's just gathered by itself, the habitat. And then on the other side, I've block fused the habitat with a stiff white Pellon fusible. And normally you wouldn't because the glue bumps show up through such a light fabric. It's very non-compatible. But I did want to demo it for you just so you can see how extreme of an effect that you can create with Pellon with different interfusings interfusings, interfacings, and fusibles. The term block fusing means when you apply a fusible interfacing to the whole uh, width of fabric and then you cut out your pattern pieces together. Otherwise, if you're creating pattern pieces for your fusible or your sew-in interfacing, you take your pattern piece, if you're going to interface the whole thing, and you want to trim an eighth of an inch all the way around. There are a lot of different interfacings. You know, Pellon is fairly stiff, but you can get a lot softer ones. And uh, like the ones you can see on screen, like maybe you want just a slightly stiffer feel. Maybe you want it drastically stiffer. Whatever your needs are, you know, I recommend that you get some fusibles 
and test it on your fabrics way before you make final decisions. And yes, fusibles do come in different colors. White and black are the most common. I have seen random red and um, beigey tones, but mostly white and black. Another type of interfacing is hair canvas, otherwise known as HIMO. Uh, they are slightly different, but um, most people call them hair canvas, horse hair canvas, goat hair canvas. And uh, it's fairly stiff, although they do also come in different softnesses. And they're typically used to tailor suits, mainly the front of the jacket. It really helps get like a really crisp tailored especially the collar lapel kind of that sh and then the, you know you put in the shoulder pads it really creates like a sharp collar lapel shoulder look this book i'm not recommending it yet i haven't looked through it enough to recommend it so that's that the next way to create volume and stiffness in your materials is with the pattern of course so right now I'm demoing a simple circle skirt. So circle skirts are used when you don't want a lot of body at the seam. You know, circle skirts, they lay flat at like, for example, the waist like I'm demoing, but they have a lot of flare at the hem because of the way the pattern is. The previous demos, I used sort of gathered dirndl styles where I cut a rectangle and I gather just one side and then that's the waist and that does add a lot of bulk at the waist depending on how much you're gathering it and it kind of depending on how soft or stiff the fabric is if it's very drapey it'll just kind of fall straight down if it's very light and fluffy it'll float out a little bit okay if it's a very stiff fabric you know it'll float up a lot so you work pairing the pattern that you use and the materials you use to create the effect that you want. You can also gather circle skirts. It creates a very uh, bouncy look. You know, it's like the bounce of the gather plus the flounce of the circle skirt. And it's like bounce flounce, bouncy flounce, lots of flounce, lots of ruffles, extreme ruffling that should be a game show or something or not anyway so there's a lot of patterns out there you can do all kinds of gathers pleating tucking you know helen joseph armstrong's pattern making book offers a lot of examples on how you can add volume and shape and structure to your garments gives you a lot of ideas but yeah, the world, once you understand how all this works, you know, you can design whatever you want. Another way to add volume is to use horsehair braid, which is not to be confused with horsehair canvas. Horsehair braid, they are generally sewn to the hems of skirts and dresses or the edges of sleeves to create like an extremely floaty, voluminous look without a ton of underskirts. I mean, of course you can combine the two for different looks, but anyway, they come in many different widths from like half an inch all the way to, I've seen six, seven, eight, nine inch horsehair braids. They come in soft and stiff varieties so you know if you're trying to make a massive ball gown in a fairly hefty material you are probably going to want like an eight inch horsehair braid in a very stiff material i used a two inch horsehair braid on this demo which is clearly too much for this little miniature half skirt i made but i did it so that you can see how extremely it will poof out this material. And yes, does this fabric have horses all over it for my horsehair braid demo? <laughs> am I a big dork? Yes, I am. Uh, but yeah, you can see the two fabrics, the two pieces of fabric of the horse print, they're exactly the same size, okay? But when I cut them and the horsehair braid really fluffs it up. 
Some horsehair braid, especially the wider ones, they will come with a string along one end so that if you, you can pull on that string to kind of gather one side if you need to do a shaped hem. There are a lot of things you can do with horsehair. You can expose it in the, some designs. You can keep it hidden and inside. You can have as much fun as you want. Next, I wanna talk about quilting. And like every other method I talked about today, quilting can be done just very simple, very wearable, or it can be done to the extremes of avant-garde, uh, wearable art, those sorts of things. And basically, all you need is your top fabric, you need some polyfill, and you quilt your design. And you can do all sorts of crazy fun designs, or you can, you know, buy already quilted, you know, diamond quilt patterns. You can choose how thick and fluffy you want your padding. Um, I just picked up some quilt batting at the fabric store. Last but not least, let's talk about padding. So that's related to quilting, but I wanna talk about these shoulder pads that I bought. They're absolutely conventional shoulder pads that you can pick up at any fabric store, but you don't have to think about it like that. You can pad whatever part of your body that you want. And uh, I did these demos so you can kind of see how you can play around. And so you can put these pads on there and then drape, do your muslin drapes of different designs on top. Uh, you can insert them into different garments to create exaggerated body shapes. The world is your oyster. And I mean that honestly, like once you're a fashion designer who really understands how materials work and how different adjustments in a pattern can work in your favor, you can really design whatever the heck you want and um, get things made, you know? If you are always limited by a lack of knowledge, the kind of, you're limited in the kind of designer you can be. That's why I'm always saying, you know, you don't have to be a masterful sewer, like, you know, your baby, you don't have to practice baby roll hems until you cry. But to understand these concepts, to understand these materials, absolutely makes you a better designer. And that is it for today. Please drop me your comments down in the comment section below. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. If you learned something new today, it really does help my channel. Please share, subscribe, all those ways you show me love. And I will see you in the next video.